Hey, I'm Susanna Lanier, actor and acting coach for over 25 years. I'm Jess Greenberg, casting director for over 10 years. We're here to help you navigate this crazy, creative, and sometimes chaotic journey into the film and television world. We share our insights as to what works. And invite some pretty spectacular guests to share more ideas to move you on your journey. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Have you ever wondered what the best way to prepare for an audition is? This topic came to mind on a recent interview we had with Sarah Booth, who shared her audition process and how she landed her recurring role on Three Pines. Because of time constraints, we weren't able to put it in the episode, but Jess and I both thought she had some really valuable points and thought it might be worth sharing on our mini So Jess, what were some of the things that came up that Sarah was talking about that uh, came to mind for you? Yeah, well, I mean, it may sound obvious, but In the breakdown, obviously the writer was listed and she Googled the writer and saw that this writer has a series of books called Three Pines and she bought them, read them and didn't even know it's this uh, Quebecois female writer and learned a lot about the, the book, the series, where the stories go. And it's just such an it's an obvious step that I think maybe some actors might not think about doing, but there is a lot of information ish. I shouldn't maybe say a lot, but there is information (laughs) in breakdowns who the director is, who the producers are writers, and just literally a reminder to research whatever you can. If there's a director, what have they done before? Do they have a style? Because not all series come from books, not, you know, there might be nothing, but whatever you can find, there's always little nuggets of information that I think can be pulled that could help you in the audition. Me too. I mean, I knew who Louise Penny was, but the fact like Sarah, she says like she looked it up and sometimes you can just look up the director and just to see, like you said, their tone. Sometimes they were just a director for hire, like we're actors for hire and there's no sort of through line, but it doesn't hurt to do it. And it's always, if anything, it can be a conversation starter, you know, Mm -hmm. if you do get the part or a callback or something. So I think it is a, a good to keep in mind. I think it also depends on the part. Like when I went in for Gwen Shambly story, I think, and it was based on real events. So then I totally looked that stuff up because I was yeah. also very curious who was the real person. And um, I was curious about the story because it was such a crazy story. So, Is that the so, Weight Watcher story? That's or the something? Weight Watcher story. Exactly. Cool. That Yeah. Tanisha talked about. So yeah. And I, I think it depends if the tone is obvious to you, then I mean, looking up the writers, like, like, let's say you're auditioning for ghosts, maybe, you know, yeah, you should definitely watch the show if it's already out, I would Mm -hmm. say to get the tone, but if it's not out, uh, you know, see where it comes from. Like, uh, yeah, again, ghosts before it came out, it was based on a British show. So when I auditioned for, did not get a part, but still (laughs) I auditioned for, uh, I did take a look at the preview of the British version just to see what the, the tone of the show was and what they were yeah. going for. Cause I and just what think kind of comedy, like, you know, absolutely. Is it subtle? Is it broad? I mean, there's so many different ways of, of playing it. So yeah. And I think you're right. People don't think of it. And I think it's a good idea to, 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 to look it up if, if you can, and if it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Um, I had a friend actually who works in Toronto in casting and she was working on a series that had multiple seasons out already. And there's a line that all the characters say in the show in every episode. And someone came in for an audition and sort of said like, oh, I I don't know how to pronounce this or I don't know, like, what is this line? And it was a key line that they all said in every single episode. It's like, okay, we're on season three or four now. You could have seen an episode or watched and taken the time to do it. And you, you know, yeah, and I know. <laughs> it's, 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 it's an opportunity. Like, it's just a missed opportunity. Like what if, did it guarantee him the role if he would have said it right? Maybe not obviously, but it's, you could have just done a little bit of work and would have seen that immediately, you know? I agree. So. 
I agree. I think, uh, I think that's something to keep in mind. The other thing I did like what Sarah said, I don't know if it's in the episode or not, but she, she was, she did it just to make the casting director laugh. And that's yeah. another thing. I mean, it's so interesting, the whole audition prepare preparation, because you want to be prepared. You want to do your job. You want to be professional. You want to do your research, know your lines, connect, ground yourself, drop in all that fun stuff. But then in the same breath, it's, uh, many of the times not going to go to you <laughs> We yeah. shouldn't think that way. But I, I mean, we have already sort of mentioned this. I, the audition is the performance. So research it, enjoy it as a creative artist that you are take it seriously and then let it go mm -hmm. and do it. Having that, the way she kept in mind was to make the casting director laugh because she didn't think it was her casting and lo and behold, she got the part. But I think that's also kind of a good attitude to be like, oh, I'm going to do this fun performance. And I know my friend casting director, Jess is going to enjoy it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. But in a way, yes, we want to bring our, or put our best foot forward, but also you do have to have fun with it and release the pressure of, I need to book this or not. Like, no, just find the truth <laughs> as we discussed and have fun. Even Tanisha brought up the same thing where she wasn't so specific about the lines and the words, but she really, to prepare for the audition was really just getting into the character you know these were yeah. mock sides there was no background at all the sides didn't even really relate to the character she was auditioning for but she just got the essence of the scene got the character and proceeded that way and had her lines was not completely off book but it didn't matter because she had the essence of that character so yeah yeah. And that's interesting, right? Because I think some people will think that should it be perfect that I'm executing a perfect audition or should I be playful where I'm still searching to find the essence? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I think it depends on the director. It depends. Like there's so many variables, you know, and I think you and have the role to and the role and it depends on the role. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any specific things that you do to prepare? Sure. Beyond. I do lots and it depends yeah. and it depends. Uh, the first thing I try to do, and I don't, sometimes, you know, you're, I'm busy. I have a family, all this. And then it's like, Oh, you have an audition. And I'm like, Oh, nope. <laughs> I have to stop. I have to take a deep breath. I'm like, you will approach it with curiosity and play. Cause if you don't, then you have to stop doing this mm -hmm. because this is the job that you've chosen. <laughs> you know, one of the jobs I have other jobs too, but acting, I'm still auditioning. I'm still professional. I'm still getting paid for it. So yeah. if I'm choosing to go out and audition, approach your auditions with curiosity and play. Those are the, the first things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fun. Right. Yeah. And then, and then, and then I go over it. First thing I do is I record it right away. The whole thing, as soon as I can, I record Just it audio, audio, all of it. Okay. read it, read it mm -hmm. because I'm busy. So I listen to it in the car, the whole, the whole thing. Mm. I listen to it when I'm going for my run. I, before I go to bed, I'm like, Oh, tired. Okay. Listen to it. So I listen to it as a whole. I try to see like the whole of the scene. That's what I do. And then usually by the next day, then I I'll do a little text analysis on it. Once it's sort of in me and I understand what's going on in the heart of the scene. And then I, um, break it down to just the other people's lines. So I can basically rehearse with myself again on the go. Mm -hmm. And, and I do very, very specific. What's my moment before? What's my goal? What's my relationship with the other characters in the scene? Where am I? So I, I do that. And then I just sort of run my lines and try to hook in how can I hook into this character? How can I drop into this character? How can I relate to this character? Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. And I, and I do that for pretty much all of it. And it doesn't take a long time because I just don't time is, is, I don't want to say time is not on my side. I got 
multiple things going on. So I have to include it, incorporate it into my life and make it a fun thing as opposed to, I have to like stop everything to, to do this, you know? And so that's how I approach it. And yes, if it was something specific like that Gwen Shambly thing, then I do look it up. Or if I was auditioning for three pints, I know Louise Penny books. So Mm -hmm. I would have known where they were coming from. So that's sort of what I do when I have an audition, I try to get it going right, right away and just incorporate it in the background right away. Yeah. That's so smart. Cause, and I guess the key is to know what kind of memorizer or learner you are, like how you take in information. Like I think the audio for me would actually be perfect. Some people I know, write it out, you know, they just literally copy down the lines because that's how they digest the information. But I think it's key to know how you do digest it. And then it sort of gets into your subconscious, right? So then you've like really feel the scene. Yeah. Amazing. Well, this was fun to talk about. Thanks, yeah. Jess. Yeah. Thank you. I, and I great. think a lot of people are going to take your tip on the audio. Oh, well, I definitely think that if they're they're doing it a different way and it's not, if they're finding it a struggle, try it. I mean, mm-hmm. you try it, you know, and see what, see if it works for you. Cause it really did help me a lot. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. Well, thanks everybody. And thanks for listening. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you at the next episode. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Have a good day.